Welcome. You're listening to Making Relationships Work. We're a company focused on women and their marriage. We lead and teach women just like you how to grow into and access whenever you need to your wise woman self, the part of you who is deeply connected to your purpose, your innate wisdom and your husband and family. We teach women in marriages how to rebuild trust and connection, to work through conflicts, no matter how deep, no matter how painful, and to lead your marriage to a place where the two of you experience marriage mastery. This podcast is about learning the systems and techniques that truly work to reconnect you back into your marriage so that you can experience the freedom that comes with a masterful marriage. Since this podcast is totally free, if you're getting tons of value and you want to support us and make sure that you get more of this good stuff, subscribe below and rate and review our podcast today. Now, on to the show. Hello, Women Making Marriages Work. Hello, Making Relationships Work, Facebook and YouTube channels. It's really lovely to have you here today. It's really lovely to be talking about a reader question that I'm going to answer. So in my Women Making Marriages Work Facebook group, there is a thread where you can ask me to talk about anything you want to. And tonight I'm going to be talking about something that one of our women, her name is Lisa, asked me. She asked me, basically, what do I do when I can't bear to be vulnerable anymore, when I feel like I've been vulnerable and I've tried and it's got me nowhere and I haven't got the energy or the reserves or the fortitude to be vulnerable again and get the same outcome, which is it didn't work, and to have tried and failed, essentially. So I've rephrased that, Lisa, forgive me, but that's what I heard when I read your question. And so let's talk about vulnerability. Let's talk about why vulnerability is the most powerful space to operate from and also what you need to put in place so that you can be vulnerable because there's no use just saying, well, I'll just strip away all of the protectors I've got and show up bare hearted because if I do that and I do it in a way where I don't really feel safe and it doesn't land in a safe space because sometimes our husbands are not emotionally safe places because we haven't built that safety together. Yes. Why would, why would you want to do that? And the answer is you wouldn't want to do that. It wouldn't be a good idea to just dive in and become vulnerable without any kind of framework or container around you. So let's talk about how you got to not being vulnerable and then we'll talk about how to build the container. Yeah. So most women take, most couples take six years of crisis before they reach this space of, I can't be vulnerable with you anymore, or I can't um, be connected to you anymore, or I have so much resentment in me that I can't feel love easily. All I feel is all the things that you haven't done. And that happens on both sides of the coin. So sometimes that's women feeling that way towards their husbands. Sometimes that's their husbands feeling that same way towards their wives. And however we put it together, adding vulnerability into a foundation that's not very stable isn't necessarily a particularly safe option. And so we don't start with vulnerability. We start with a different kind of connection, which is, hey, my love, things haven't been so good, have they? And then we go from there. So the problem is if you have a marriage that's in crisis or a marriage that's got a lot of resentment built up or marriage that's got a lot of um, hurt and pain in it that hasn't been resolved, neither one of you is going to want to be vulnerable. Both of you are going to want to defend yourselves and you're going to enter in each conversation defending or being prepared for defense. And so vulnerability doesn't live in that space. You know that, I know that. And so no wonder you don't want to be vulnerable, Lisa. No wonder you're thinking this isn't a good idea because it's not. It's not a good idea to be vulnerable when the two of you have been up against each other or defending yourself from each other and you can't see the good, you can't see the love, you can't find the connection, you can't find the trust. Because all of those words are what it need what needs to happen in order for vulnerability to thrive. 
unless you build vulnerability in yourself and you can show up and kind of put a container around the situation and lead from there. But that's quite an advanced skill set and not something we can cover tonight <laughs> in our Facebook Live. But it is something that, of course, we can cover in a different context. And so let's talk then about how do we, how do we build a marriage where you can be vulnerable and it's safe, where you have had resentment and pain and you still can show up vulnerably and both of you know how to handle that because there's a real skill set issue here. The skill set is how do, how do I build the confidence and the language to be vulnerable in a way that my partner can receive it and then knows what to do with it. Let's pause on that for a second because both of you don't really know how to recognize when one person is vulnerable. And if you do, you probably don't know how to respond to it in a way that has that person feel held and loved and supported and understood. And that's not your fault. It's not. You are working in your marriage with the skills that got handed down to you from your family of origin. This is the way you watch your parents interact. This is the way you watch your grandparents or friends' parents interact or the way that you were in a relationship with people across your formative years. You are the sum parts of what you learned socially. And so probably you've been around people that haven't been able to show you what it looks and feels like to be vulnerable, to keep yourself safe, to keep you both connected at the same time. And that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about connection. We're talking about safety. And we're talking about a container and also I know what to do when you are vulnerable. I know how to be there with you in a way that resonates for you. Couples don't have this understanding. They don't get it from their communities. They don't get it from their family of origin. This is advanced stuff. This is stuff our parents don't know how to do. So it makes no hmm, what was I how would I phrase this? It makes absolute sense that you can't do this easily in your marriage this idea of being vulnerable because if you are vulnerable you're not that safe because your beautiful husband doesn't know what to do with you and each time you've done it it hasn't worked so where do we go and what do we do now well what we need to do is to build a relationship or to repair a relationship so that there's energy in it and then we need some new skills Okay, so the energy idea and the skills, they're in my masterclass, so you can go and watch that. Both of those things are what envelops somebody in a relationship to be able to connect and to work together. This is what's important. So we need the foundations right, so that being vulnerable can be received and supported. And then the other person can reciprocate but we're doing it in a way where we're building and we're coming closer, not further apart, because that is what relationship masters do. What we don't want to have happen is you go in and you're vulnerable and it lands terribly and it does more damage and you get further apart. And this is what the disaster side of the relationship master disaster continuum do. They try with all that they know, but they're just missing the pieces. So that vulnerability doesn't work. It doesn't build you anything. It doesn't bring you closer. It doesn't teach you anything other than don't do that again. That didn't work. You must put up more walls. And of course, the more walls that you put up, the more resentment builds, the more separate you become, the harder it is to find your way back. But we can find our way back. <laughs> so long as you've got the skills, the container, the safety, the language, the understanding, of how to be vulnerable in a space where somebody knows what to do with your vulnerability, how to look after you. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna watch the masterclass for the skills and also some of the languaging and some of the reconnection ideas because those things are the beginning. Then what you're going to do is if you have watched that and you've watched this, you're going to book a call with me and my team and we're going to help you with what specifically does your marriage need to have happen. So this is an invitation to Lisa, but it's an invitation to anyone that this resonates with. If you're fit to work with us, we will 
love to help you, but not every person who books a call with us is the, in the right space to be working with us. And so that's totally fine. So your job is to take what you can from this. And if we are a fit together, you think we're a fit and we think we're a fit and it works, then let us strategize and find our way through this. No matter what happens on that call, we will help you with a plan. Yeah. So that's the second part. The third part is to start to say to yourself, when have I been successful in my vulnerability? When are we as a couple good at being vulnerable? If you've got evidence points for when that has worked, do more of that. If it hasn't worked for you before, watch the masterclass, book the call. I've got to build that skill set in you so that you know how to do it. Nothing can't be learned in a marriage. Everything is available to be learned. You've just really got to understand that you're missing some of the pieces that you need for a masterful marriage. That's not your fault. That's nothing to be ashamed of. That's just, that's just learning. And learning is just as simple as connecting neurons and adding new skills. We can do that. That's no trouble. Okay. So it was lovely to talk to you today. Lisa, thank you for your question. I hope all of you do some reflection on vulnerability in your marriage and containers and safety. And if he is vulnerable, how do I respond? Does that land? If I'm vulnerable, how does he respond? Does that land? We're looking at the container that keeps you safe so that you can be connected, you can be vulnerable, you can move into that marriage mastery space. All right, my darlings, it was lovely to be here with you. Vulnerability is super important. It allows you to share, truly share life's ups and downs, but most of us have boundaries around our hearts. If we can release those boundaries, we are open to experience life in a better, deeper, more connected way that allows us to feel really, really well loved and cared for. I want that for you and I want that for your husband and your kids as well. So follow the steps, masterclass, call, evaluation, noticing, adding new skills. That's the answer. I'll talk to you soon. Bye darlings. Thank you for tuning into today's show. If you're feeling fired up and you're ready to grow and you want to know more about how to do that, here is what I want you to do now. I want you to watch my marriage masterclass. This masterclass will show you how my clients have turned their struggling marriages into thriving marriages, even without their husband's buy-in. How my clients have gone from cycles of poor communication, disconnect and loneliness to being teammates and soulmates with their husbands again even after they've already tried everything. And the proof of the system my clients use to start transforming their marriages in minutes, not years, because life is too precious to waste one more minute in an unhappy and unfulfilling marriage. So if this is what you're looking for, I want you to click the link below and take a look at my masterclass.